I'm Ricky. And I'm Joe, and this is Season 4, Episode 1 of the Beer and Broadband Podcast. Um, we're going to put this out on uh, 5-24-2021, so should see you then. Uh, we're uh, starting a little bit late this year, uh, and we'll talk about that probably a little bit later on. But first, we're going to get to the brews, and my coffee pot in the background making a really loud beeping noise that will be amazing um yeah so yeah, that's what they say about just edit it in post right yeah. you guys never heard it we promise <laughs> you, guys never will hear it. you thought you heard it it was uh, your own timer in your own house going that's on. right exactly um so let's talk about this this is going to be the wine episode today and basically uh what ricky's done is provided us with four rieslings uh he's provided us with cupcakes riesling Barefoot's Riesling, Yellowtail's Riesling, and the Biltmore Estates from North Carolina, Riesling. And we're going to go through and sample each of the Rieslings, um, but we're not going to know which one we're drinking, and we're going to try to guess which one is which. <laughs> so this should be fun, especially since I've tried three of these before. Uh, so I, fair disclosure, I've had the Cupcake, the Barefoot, and the Yellowtail before. Um, and I can't remember if I've had the Biltmore. I feel like I have, but I'm not going to say that I have for sure. However, um, my wife, Venus, has very graciously mixed up the um, samples for us, um, and so we don't have any idea what is what. So let's go at it. Um, see, see which one you like first. I'm just going to go sure. from left to right. Now, that's got a little bit of like a honey suckle character mm -hmm. to it. Has a, a very like a white wine, like yeah. almost that kind of vinegary kind of flavor. It's lightly carbonated, it looks like. Yeah, the one I'm going with is, is pretty much just, just fruit. It's a lot of like floral and citrus fruit notes. Um, very similar to like the the ASCII, probably mm -hmm. pronouncing that wrong, which is good because my wife absolutely loves the ASCIIs. It's it's pretty much the only one I got her to start drinking until I could branch her out on some. This one is a little bit more funky that I'm drinking here. Ooh. Yeah, we might be on the same one. <laughs> um, it's not bad, but it's definitely more tart. More tart. Um, you know, most risings are kind of like a medium sweet. This is maybe like a semi sweet. Yeah. It doesn't have as much sugar in it, but it's not bad. No, it's not terrible. Um, I don't know that we got the same one because it's very possible that, you know, I got something else. I think from the bubble condition of this one. Yeah, that's true. Mine has like no almost no bubbles in it, yeah. but yours does. Well, so maybe you've got another funky one coming up. No, but, the, uh, this one I think is the one that you have over there that's the the glass oh really yeah. yeah it might yeah all of our glasses are mixed up too so we, could, we don't even know when we're trying the same ones but this one reminds me a little bit of when we went to um the whatever it's called the the beer thing at the science of wine? science of, well science of beer, science of beer. Okay. um that um that funky beer that they like squirt out of the keg at you yeah yeah the um the one from the photo mm -hmm. that they they and, and that was a cider that they do this one does have some more like cider notes to it. I think. Ooh, okay. I said the other one was a little dry. This one's actually, I guess you can't call it dry. They're a little bit there, but. So this one is wetter than that one. So I think this one has been the driest so far. Yeah. This one's my driest one so far for sure. This one has been the most semi dry. Mm -hmm. um, this one's certainly tasty. So I'm the one I've got in my. Oh, man, I shouldn't have really been asking you what the place was because I've got a cup that says it right here. Um, <laughs> didn't realize that. But, uh, okay. All right, my last, last one. one. Okay, okay, that yeah. was much sweeter for me. It was much more like a, a champagne almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that might have been what was my first one. Yeah. My first one was by far the sweetest. All right. So, I'm going to go back in. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to re-taste some of these. And I'm pretty sure that this one is going to be the cupcake. This one is number one. Okay. The last one that I drank is number one. Mm, I need to 
clean my palate a little bit because that suddenly, yeah, after true. having the sweet one, the first mm-hmm. one suddenly became very dry. Okay, regained some of its sweetness, and I think this one is actually the yellowtail. Yeah, I am. I'm being incredibly stereotypical because these are all from different countries, except the one, um, except the barefoot and the uh, Baltimore. Those are here in the U.S. Biltmore. Biltmore. And I'm just going off. What do I think is like? I'm thinking the German will be the driest. I was all I'm doing is going on sweetness. Is like who has a palate for more sweet stuff? Um, all right. So. I'm sitting here, and I'm looking at them the way that I've set them up. Riesling, Barefoot, Yellowtail, Biltmore is what I think here. I'm going to sit on that for a minute. Yep, I'm still going to. I've got mine in my alpha order. I'm going to take a quick sip of everything else. Let's let's talk about what these are first. So the Biltmore is an American Riesling that's made at Biltmore State. Um which is in uh, Asheville, North Carolina. Um, I'm just making sure it's actually made. Yeah, vented and bottled by Biltmore Estate Wine Company, Asheville, North Carolina, and I believe it was made in uh, Asheville. So that's the first one. And the Yellowtail is from Australia. So 2019 um, from the Casella family. And, um, I mean, these are all mm-hmm. inexpensive wines, I would say. They are, they weren't very yep. expensive. I think None $10 of them. or less, right? I think one was 12 But, yeah, all $12 or less, all from really big names in wine, at least to, like, export out. Like, I'm sure if you're actually in Australia or Germany, you've got some other, like, local favorites. Yeah. But, you know, Cupcake, huge exporter. Yellowtail, I think, is the biggest exporter of wine in Australia. Yeah, it is. So I wanted to pick one that I felt like, were pretty available. Like I didn't go to a special wine store to get these. I just went to one of our local grocery stores, Wegman, that just has a nice wine section. But okay, I think I've I think I've got mine. So the Barefoot is from California, mm-hmm. and it, I just checked it's bottled and vented by Barefoot, from what I can tell. Yep. And then this one is the German cupcake is the German uh, wine, and it says it's a false reason. Um, and that's P F A L Z in case I'm mispronouncing okay. it. I'll have to ask Inga if that is the correct pronunciation. And so it says that it was imported from Germany and bottled and vented in Germany. Mm-hmm. And it, but it's but Cupcake is a California winemaker. So that's the only one that was vented by another company. Uh, and yeah, imported. Yeah, but it just gets imported and distributed. All right, I'm going to try again and see Okay, just to make sure. Uh, I think I've got mine. I've gone purely on stereotypes of taste. Having gone to Germany. That's true. You've got a little before, bit of an advantage. I've got a little bit of an yeah. advantage on getting this possibly right. That We get internet points if we get it right, by the way. like There's nothing... There's nothing more than internet points. Yeah, about, we, we get right. one podcast length worth of bragging rights. Yeah, I'm pretty sure... I'm right about that one. Ah, such a such a toss up. It really is. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to do the Riesling. They're generally not aged in oak, or if they are, for no real significant time, um, which means you're re- and all the grapes have to be the same because they're Riesling. So you're really just tasting the difference in what you get from the soil, and maybe like yeast selection. So you know they are all fairly similar, um, except for the sweetness. They all are kind of like a different level of sweet. But again, I think that just goes to regional tastes. All right, so I think I'm keeping mine in the mm-hmm. same kind of thing. I, it, so this one is the sweetest. It's also the one that has the most um, effervescence to it. So okay. slight, slightly carbonated. Um, and uh, this one is, I think, the driest for me. Okay. It's the second driest, second sweetest. Okay. So, so I'm sitting here and I'm pointing at them. My number one is in one cup is in, in the, the the third cup that I tried mm-hmm. um, so see, see that'll be interesting because I, I went with a different selection I put my sweetest one 
That's the second one because that's the barefoot. I'm like, look, California made in large numbers for most retailers. They're going to want the sweet. And I'm thinking, that, I think my German one's the driest one because I'm like, ah, oh, the German, surely they'll. They're, they're, you know, anything over in Europe is a little bit less sweet in America is my rationale. <laughs> okay. But we'll see. So are you ready to, to flip them over? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay. I'll look at the bottom. This one is number two, so this right. one is the barefoot. I That's got number one, so Germans uh, confirmed light dry wine. Uh, uh, I'm duration. already off to a bad start. Uh, okay. This one is number one, so I got number one and, and number two, two backwards. Honest. Okay, I got number two right. So again, us wonderful Americans love love the sweet wines. This one is number three. Oh, this one's number three. I think I swept it. And this and that's was number, number four. four. So I got two out of four right, and you got four out of four, four right. right. <laughs> well, I, okay, so you talk about why you think that's the way it is, and then I'll tell you my rationale yeah. behind it. Uh, my wonderful rationale for this, um, very much that, like, used the wrong formula, got the right answer. I just thought, look, I think the German one's the driest one. So that's the one I put in with the dry. I'm like, I, barefoot. Is so widely distributed and accepted in America, like that's got to be on the sweeter end. So I just put the sweetest one in for Barefoot, uh, especially because I don't think Barefoot makes um, some of the other sweet wines. Because we looked for like um, some yeah. other sweet wines. They with don't them. make Moscatos or anything. Yeah, so I'm like, so this has got to be part of their like sweet selection, hopefully. Um, and then we kind of had some of the more funky ones, and I went with kind of the funkiest one being the Yellowtail thinking you know really just grabbing at a guess because i knew biltmore wouldn't be one of those like overly sweet ones because no, no offense to biltmore but they're kind of like a quote-unquote fancy winery yeah like even though the bottles aren't that expensive actually i think that might have been the 12 dollar one but you know they're you know the biltmore house and all that other stuff you know there's there's like a a level of quote-unquote refinement they try and put around that name so i expected it to have like some of those other flavors to it uh, but I'll admit, two and three were much more of a just, which one of these do I think is funkier? And I'll give Australia the funkier one. So you're, you're thinking, well, so why am I telling Ricky this? Because um, I am a little bit more of a wine person. You are. You've drank yeah. a lot more wine than I have. I've only kind of gotten into wine seriously, like since the pandemic started. Also, I went to Germany and had German wine mm -hmm. like and beer and things like that within the last I mean, i've been there twice and i've had it both times and that's been uh within the last um uh three four years yeah i did that. so i've actually had the experience of having that german wines actually are not all dry there's mm -hmm. a gamut of them and uh, some are really dry some are really not but also this is a california wine it was made in germany so yeah but that's that, kind of the same it's, thing it's been though. made it's been it's, made a particular way mm -hmm. um so i think what confused me between the two california wines and i've had the barefoot before is that this didn't feel as sweet the last time okay I had it. and this felt sweeter i can see time. that because we're just drinking a bunch of already you know none of these are like dessert wines even the sweet one um is like a medium sweetness so I can definitely see, especially yep. as dry some of the other ones are, it really boosts that perception of yep. sweetness. Yeah, it, it absolutely did. So I, I, my, my experience tricked me into thinking the difference between the two because mm -hmm. in my mind, this was the sweeter of the two from my memory. From oh, my really? Perception. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so the, I'm talking about the cupcake being the sweeter of the mm. two. Um, they're not terribly far off in sweetness. The barefoot is... I'd say if it was a range of one to ten, the cupcake would be like a five, and mm -hmm. the barefoot would be like a seven. Or yeah, eight. that's true. Yeah, as far as like sweetness goes, um, but I mean they're definitely it, it's a difference. It's just not not as. And then the the yellowtail and the other one. I mean, I just nailed those because I mm -hmm. I, I, I knew that the Biltmore had certain things that were going with it um, to to create those flavors. Um, that, that were going on there and and that is going to be kind of unique to the Biltmore yeah. terroir and you can taste that in just about everything that they grow and, and do on mm -hmm. the property um, so since I've had um, a good bit of Biltmore state wines before uh, you know I knew that which yeah. is pretty cool pretty cool yeah um, I'll admit that turned out 
Well, that's okay. <laughs> it turned out to be a little bit more fun than I thought it was going to be because I didn't expect there to be kind of, even though there's not a whole lot of fluctuation in sweetness, I expected there to be less. I thought I was going to have to really be thinking on this one and be like, okay, what are these like secondary or tertiary flavors I think might be coming from this, you know, whose soil tastes more like apricots, <laughs> like that sort of thing. Um, well, well, no, they, so, um, the, the wines themselves, they actually, uh, are a bit more forward in having the Riesling. T- like the, yeah. they, they all taste so similar. They really do. Like yeah. if you take the sweetness away, they're very similar wines. And it's nice because I actually liked all four bottles, which means whichever two I take back, my wife won't complain about. And I think I'm going to have to, um, kind of figure out which of these is which when it comes to certain um like things if i'm not mistaken all of these should have been lightly toasted oak they should have had a little bit of wood that they were in for a little while but i'm not 100 percent sure about that some wines are some wines aren't yeah but i'm i'm pretty sure that at least built uh, does that with this wine. they very well could have yeah because I mean, you can't really check that in the um the little description they give you on the market. That's actually another thing I liked when looking these up. I was really worried I would know too much about them when I got here because I would have had to like read the label. Cause I was, I was a little self-conscious cause I know like some Rieslings, like when I was looking through different ones, um, will say like how sweet they are. And even that I was like, that's a little bit too much for me. But, uh, I don't know if it's a point in favor or against Wegmans, but their description of these wines is like a sentence and a half. Yeah. It's really bare bones, no tasting notes, anything like that. Uh, that kind of just tells you like where it's from, and that's about it. Yeah, they, so. I mean, they generally don't at Wegmans. Yeah, I've bought some mm-hmm. wine from them before. Um, they tell you more about the cheese and the tasting notes that you might buy to pair with these things than they do the Yeah, the not, no, not even that on their website is real bare bones. But what no, that's kind of nice. I meant the, uh, the cheese at the count cheese counter where it has tasting notes this pairs well with oh yeah yeah i haven't run yeah. by their their uh like the little cheese counter over there but uh, their wine section is nice actually their whole alcohol section is nice it's like yeah. three rows we've been uh, going crazy um over there since the pandemic getting like one or two wines every week so um let's talk about why we're starting late this year uh, because the world exploded, but you're, you're very much right. We kind of set that president's last time. Oh, we're going to do a spring and we're going to do a fall. Right. And now we're kind of like doing a summer and then I don't know if we'll still do fall or winter or whatever, we'll how we'll place it out. Something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it became very difficult the last few weeks to find a weekend. We were both free to be in person. One, you know, out the whole pandemic thing, we had to all get vaccinated, but my kid has started daycare and just is bringing home plagues every week or two. Which is very normal. All the parents tell me it's normal. But man, uh, she's wiped the house out a few times. Like just everyone's taking Monday off because we're all just sick in bed. But she never is because she gets it first. So like she gets it Friday and she's feeling real bad on Saturday, maybe half a Sunday. And by Monday, she's up ready to play and we're all just dead. <laughs> I think I think the big thing, though, is um, we, we started talking about doing it remote and then we just decided... This is a fun thing that we do together, like yeah. in person, and it's one of those things that while it's fun to do remote, it, it it's not as fun, right? Mm-hmm. So we waited till we got vaccinated. I think we talked about it to begin with, but I just decided, eh, you know, I'm gonna put it off until we're yeah, well, you, yeah, especially because you got to get vaccinated pretty early in terms of like general population. Yeah, like you, you got to run in through. I didn't get mine until till pretty recently, but it is a lot more fun to do in person. And it here's the thing. It's harder to do it remote because we have to have the same things to drink. So I, one of us already kind of has to drive to the other one and then drive back. So you're doing most of the work to record the <laughs> podcast, but you're not getting to hang out together. Yeah. So it's like, it, uh, it, I guess on a technical level, like Discord was a nice tool to use. That was yeah. kind of fun. But uh, it's it really hard to replace that, like, you actually go over and see somebody and have a couple drinks. Yeah, plus, I mean, like, if, if we want to talk about headphones or something, I couldn't mm-hmm. just go, like, we can pass them around. Exactly, Let's talk right. about these, yeah, and so, or something like that. Please so. pull up the specs and pretend you know what they sound like. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what are we going to do in, in Season 4? Well, you know, we've got some uh, equipment to talk about, maybe some ubiquity stuff. We've got some events that have happened that we're going to talk about, you know, the the uh, ubiqui- ubiquity um, breach that they had, and uh, there's been a couple other things like that. Um, 
do you have anything planned to talk about for season four yourself, or are you just going to kind of ride the ride the lightning? I'm going to ride the lightning. I'll probably come up with a few things, but I don't have anything for this particular recording session. I brought the line. I was, I was happy with that. <laughs> that was even a logistical challenge. My, my poor, um, poor wife, we kept saying, hey, we're going to go in person, but Wegmans has something going on with their website. Uh, last, well, a couple of days ago, we tried to order groceries online like three times, and it, it broke each time and emptied out the cart. So we said, fine, we're going to go in person. Uh, and then my mother, she's normally living with us, but we're getting ready to sell her house. And she went home for like two days. She's like, oh, well, we've lost our babysitter now. And uh, I can't think of anything worse than having a three-year-old in the wine section for 30 minutes while you pick out wines. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we, we literally picked these up yesterday. We were able to get an order in and grabbed them on Friday. Oh, that's, that's not too bad. Um, yeah, so I think that's probably pretty much the end of this episode. So thanks for watching uh, or listening. Thanks for listening. Um, this has been Season 4, Episode 1 of the Beer and Broadband Podcast, and we'll catch you next time.